Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's Fatmata here from Traditionally Inspired Meaningful Art and I'm back to show you that I made the dress. I wanted to hop on here quickly in between all the things that are going on in my world to let you know that I made the dress. Last we spoke, I had this fabric cut into pieces in preparation to make this McCall's dress from my Make 9 of 2022, and I was able to finish, up, finish it up last week, so I wanted to show it to you. The dress that I'm wearing is McCall's M7925, and this was in my Make 9 for 2022. It is described as a Mrs. Button Front dress that is fitted through the bust with a neckband, inset midriff and sleeve, and skirt variations. Yes, yes, yes. It has elasticized sleeves, and also you can add piping. So I did a number of those variations. I went for view D, which is the view that is on the model in the cover. It is long, it is tiered, and it's lovely. Very, very swishy. And I went for the big billowy sleeves, which has an elasticized cuff, as they mentioned, and you have a separate waistband piece as well as neck band. Now, I was excited to make this pattern up last year. I had a couple of fabrics in mind for it. And I was initially going to go for a viscose that I picked up in my birthday haul from Mood Fabrics. But in the end, I ended up going for the cotton voile that I got in that same order from Mood Fabrics Online. So I'm going to insert some clips of me in this dress for you, but it is beautiful. I will say this though, I cannot wait to try out this dress or something very similar to it in a viscose because I think it's going to be magnificent in viscose. It's nice in the cotton wall, but it's not magnificent. You know what I mean? I think that the cotton wall continues to be deceiving to me and I always, always want it to behave like a viscose but it cannot be what it is not and I always think because of how light it is it's going to be swishy and flowy and behave like a viscose in its drape but because of the cotton property it is still structured <laughs> I mean it is lightweight but it is still structured like a cotton so what helped me is that in the very bottom tier I did end up lining it so I was very lucky I went to the thrift store and I actually lucked up on a twin sized cotton poly black bed sheet and it was perfect that worked out really well I made sure that I lined or yeah I lined the bottom tier of this uh, gathered skirt because in my experience when working with cotton wall I think it needs that additional weight at the bottom to um, give it the heaviness to um, to weigh it down, right? So that it's not just blowing in the breeze all willy nilly. That's been my experience at least. And I know I made a dress, a Butterick shirt dress last year, towards the end of the year, this black base with like these green little rectangles on it. And I forgot to line the skirt um, the bottom tier of that skirt and it does that it just like blows all around and I regret <laughs> not having I had the foresight to do that um, anyway I'm really happy I made it I feel like I'm gonna be all over the place as far as sizing goes I believe I cut a 12 in the top of the bodice graded out to a size 14 at the waist and then to a size 18 at the hip again I don't have the pattern in front of me but I'm pretty sure that is what I did and that fit quite well I'm really excited about it. This is a pattern that I bought twice last year in both size ranges in order to make sure I can make it all work. And I'm very pleased that I've made it. Now, it shows a lot of collarbone. A lot of clavicle is on display. 
That's not my personal preference. I have found that I much, much rather have a jewel neckline that sits right up here personally. So I don't actually know if I'd make this dress again, though I think it's absolutely fabulous. What I may need to do is figure out a different like top bodice feature. I don't know. I'm going to have to hack a couple of patterns that I have because I love the voluminous sleeve. I love this midriff panel. I love the skirt. I just don't know that I'm going to enjoy this so much. I think it looks beautiful on so many people who have made it. I think it looks great on me, but it's not my preference to have all of this open. And I really don't feel like this is a dress where I want to have a turtleneck under it. So it's just a note to self that I probably would have to swap out a bodice or figure something else out to make it fit the way that I would prefer moving forward. But this dress as it is, stellar. One of the things that I told you all that I was going to do was really focus on pattern placement with this and hopefully you can see that I did that. This fabric was a border print so it had this beautiful burst of florals um, coming up from the bottom and then the top of the fabric was just all black as you see here and as you see in this panel of the skirt. So I made use of that. I wanted a lot of I wanted the florals to really be concentrated at the bottom as the fabric was and then I made the top of the skirt have more of the black there. I also used the black section for the back bodice piece but then I flipped the sleeve over so that I can catch that um, so I can catch those florals and have it cascading down the arm. I had a bit of the you know florals just the remnants of the top of the bouquets remaining so i made sure to strategically cut out the bodice in that section i also wanted the florals all the way around the midriff panel so that worked out quite well i told you all last time that i was hoping to make piping i did and i piped just about everything i could remember to pipe i even piped in the arm band like the arm side so that was really cool. I put piping, of course, down the center front um, where the button front placket is. I put piping in the midriff panel and in the top and bottom of the neckband. So I piped as much as I could. I have quite a bit of it left over. I did end up going with my acrylic yarn in between um, the continuous bias binding that I made in order to make the piping. I made the piping out of the self fabric and I used the bit that had the floral in it. So I just borrowed some from that bottom tier, <laughs> just cut it off and made some continuous bias binding. Now, if I had used a solid color, I think you would have seen the piping so much more and it could have been so much more impactful. In my mind, it was gonna be cool to use the you know self fabric with the florals, but I feel like it gets lost in some areas and then I'm like, I went through all of that work to put in that piping. Show yourself, you know? Like in this section, unfortunately, it caught some of the black in the fabric. So it's just like, piping but it's all black on black so you see nothing and that was disappointing i worked really hard to do all of that piping so that was kind of unfortunate in those areas but all in all i loved this dress and i'm really happy i ended up making it for my buttons i really did not want to use these buttons it stalled me i almost didn't move forward with this dress because of these buttons these are thrifted buttons and I think the only issue I was having with them was how shiny they were. Wasn't a huge fan, but I didn't really have another set of black or, you know, other interesting buttons that I had enough of. I had 10 of these buttons. This dress calls for, I think, 13, if I'm not mistaken. So my bottom three buttons are not the same. We're friends, so I'm telling you, but don't tell nobody else. So that is the dress. I'm trying to become a plant mom. If you have plants, please let me know how to keep these babies alive. For some of these, I'm sure the trick is just to forget about them until I remember them and then I water them. I went for things that had really, really thick leaves because I think those are the ones that like 
if I go a week without watering them, they won't cry and wither away. <sighs> Aside from that, I went to community forklift. And in my area, in the Hyattsville, Maryland area, community forklift is a special place. It's like a thrift store for construction and home wares. That's the best way I can describe it. You can buy an old door, you can buy furniture, light fixtures, chandeliers, toilets, refrigerators, paint. I mean, just anything, construction, homewares, home goods, that sort of thing. Reclaimed wood. And I went in there to look for some things for the home. And lo and behold, in one of their little display areas, to my surprise, I see a vintage Singer sewing machine. And I had to stop. I had to go and inspect the situation. And on their tag, they said that it ran and it was sewing. They even had like um, some fabric down that kind of showed that it had sewn some things. And I was like, oh. I have only spent the last two years listening to my friends here on YouTube talk about the beauty of the stitches that comes from a vintage sewing machine. And it's one of those things that even as they're describing it in my mind, I think like what can be different between that stitch and another straight stitch? Like what are you, what are you talking about? And I thought to myself, well, maybe you just need to find out. So I got myself a vintage 1916 Singer 66. I got it home. It is still in its cabinet. The cabinet is worse for wears. The machine itself, like the decals on it, are also worse for wears. It was, I was just mesmerized that there was a vintage Singer sewing machine. I think other connoisseurs of vintage sewing machines probably would have passed this one up because maybe they're used to seeing others that are like fresher with like their paint and stuff like that but a working vintage singer machine i didn't mind i brought it home i was so excited i you know was like dusting it dusting it off literally and went ahead to sew so i'm hearing the motor run ah! and I could turn on the light, I can hear the motor running, but no wheels are turning. And I'm like, why? You said it sewed, what's going on? So then I had to stop, do some YouTubing, and do some research. So what I discovered was that what it's missing is the belt that goes around the like spoked wheel. Don't, don't let me <laughs> confuse you. I don't know what I'm talking about, but there is supposed to be like a belt that runs and as the motor is turning, it would then turn the hand wheel. Because truthfully, when I like manually turn the hand wheel, it does in fact stitch, <laughs> so it works. I just need the belt. So I ordered the belt online and I'm just waiting for that to come in, but I cannot wait. The cabinet, however, the cabinet situation, I might strip the wood on the cabinet and just refinish it because it is weathered. I don't know if someone had this outside. I don't know if they had it out in the elements. I am not sure, but um, yeah, it could be a lot of different things, but I'm so, so happy for this machine. It's just great. And it came with a box of other goodies. Like there's thread in there. There are three vintage sewing patterns and I think they're Vogue, all Vogue, a pair of pants and skirt and then two sort of like dresses or tops. Gorgeous. So I can't wait to kind of dig into all of that stuff. But I have a vintage Singer sewing machine. I'm so excited. I wanted to do a look back on 2022, my hits and misses, as well as talking about my 2022 Make 9 and then plans for my 2023 Make 9 because I really enjoyed having a Make 9. I think I might do it a little bit differently this year. I won't go into my full Make 9, but after discovering, after bringing home this vintage Singer sewing machine, I 
feel like I need to make a fully vintage garment. Like try and find in my stash if I have any vintage fabric, possibly. Use the vintage sewing machine, use the vintage notions that I've thrifted over time and use a vintage sewing pattern. <laughs> that would be so cool. That would be so much fun. Yeah, I think that might make it onto the make nine, we'll see. But you'll have to wait for an upcoming video for me to kind of discuss how I think I'm gonna move forward with Meek Nines uh, for 2023. Let me know your thoughts, how to keep plant babies alive. Tell me how you feel about this dress. Um, I don't know, what are you excited about for 2023? Are you doing a Make Nine? Did you reflect on your previous Make Nine? What are you most excited to see here on this channel coming into 2023? Let me know. All right. Stay creative, friends. Bye.